Some walk through the fire. No one will try them. The world can be against them, so they put the world on their shoulders. Those are the heroes that save us from the darkest moments. Today's show will focus on human trafficking, ways to help, and receive aid. Human trafficking is the recruitment and transport of a child or adult for the purposes of sexual exploitation or forced labor. Sadly, there are many people enslaved today than are in the heights of slavery. There are around 40 million adults and children in forced labor and sexually slavery. Now, that's a lot. And today's special guest is Katarina Rosenblatt. Dr. Rosenblatt has a personal testimony of overcoming human trafficking and abuse. She was kidnapped from Miami from the time she was 13 years of age to the age of 17. After escaping her initial trafficking experiences and drug addiction, she found herself pregnant by a Colombian cartel family member, which soon led her to marrying into the family. This ended in a 20-year abusive marriage where Kat says that leaving was harder than staying in that relationship and family. With so many triumphs over unbeatable obstacles, Kat is now a much sought after speaker and trainer in the areas of human trafficking and domestic violence, as well as an inspirational leader to women everywhere. Presently, Dr. Kat is a consultant for the FBI and Homeland Security. Katarina, welcome to the show. We're alive in the cure. Thank you so much, Amy, for having me. And Boris, it's a pleasure to be on your show on your show today. Thank you. Thank you, Katarina. It's it's our honor. Katarina, you have an amazing story, and I'm starting to discover more about it now as I read your book, which I'm quite intrigued. Mm -hmm. But Katarina, you were lured into the sex trade world at 13 and forced to marry the Colombian cartel family. Can you tell us just a little bit about your story, if that's okay? Yeah, as I was listening to you read off my bio, and that end part, leaving was harder than saying. Words couldn't be truer, even today. Um, sometimes you see someone with a PhD and a book, you know, my book stolen and speaking, but they don't see behind the scenes everything that I still have to deal with as a result of getting tangled up with the wrong people so many years ago as a teenager. Um, how it started for me was at 13, I was coming from a dysfunctional home life, and my mom left my abusive father. So abuse in the home made it sort of normal to be re-abused or re-exploited because it was familiar. And so the first trafficking experience I had, which I have to say they were not connected, um, I had several different experiences of exploitation. The reason being because I didn't have the services like there are today or a ministry like I have. There is hope for me uh, to help rescue girls and bring them out of the darkness and, bring, and give them hope. Unfortunately, back then, it was just, me and my mom and God. And so at 13, I was recruited at a hotel in Miami Beach through a trafficking ring that was networked throughout the hotel. And they even got hotel employees to be a part of the trafficking to recruit children and vulnerable young adults into the sex trade. And so the first experience I had was sex tourism, what they call today. Uh, with a 65-year-old John who is a sex buyer looking to purchase an American virgin girl for $550. And that was my initial entry into that life. Of course, I didn't know the difference <clears throat> between a safe father figure or a safe male, for that matter, and unsafe, because all I knew was unsafe my whole life. And so 
they came across using my vulnerability that they wanted to introduce me to someone who wanted to be a daddy to me. And that's how a lot of girls enter into the sex trade looking for a father figure or a family to belong to. And there's a specific vulnerable po population to this. They, uh, these perpetrators, from what I was reading in your book, they seek out and they watch the the people that they, the kids that they target for a while. For sure. And you spoke mm -hmm. about some of the misconceptions. I mean, this can happen to anyone. A kid's life can be perfect. It can be bad where they're feeling bad, but it can be perfect. And all it is, they just have to not feel loved, and they. They, they read this. They can tell. Absolutely. Yeah, when you come from a home situation where there is no sense of nurturing or connectedness or belonging, you are vulnerable. You're lacking something that is needed in every human being's life. You know, that is the feeling of being wanted. And when you feel rejected or you've been abused or abandoned or lack that nurturing from a mother or a father figure. Traffickers can tell because they are studying and watching and looking for vulnerable children and young people that they can prey upon. Both males and females can be traffickers and both males and females can be victims. In your book, you also state that you were one of the lucky ones. What is it that makes you feel like one of the lucky ones having endured what you have endured? The services that are being provided to survivors today make it much, much more likely for kids to get out of this situation. You know, there's wonderful law enforcement here in Los Angeles County who are trying very hard to make a difference uh, and in Kern County. However, in that time when I was experiencing exploitation, human trafficking didn't even have a definition. There was no such thing as it. So it wasn't identified and it wasn't explained, which is why I got uh, re-exploited because I, I never had any intervention. I never had anyone to come and explain to me what had happened, which is one of the things that we do through our ministry. There's hope for me because kids don't readily self-identify. And I'm so thankful for how far the, the movement has come. When you educate someone on what they've experienced, it helps them understand it and not become vulnerable to it again. I was fortunate. Truly, truly, God saved me because there was nobody rescuing me uh, from that situation. There was a purpose for my life. I mean, I experienced attempted murder. I experienced attempted um, drug overdose even suicide, but none of those things worked, and I survived. So that's why I count myself very fortunate that God rescued me for a reason, so that I can be here today to help um, these other young women and young men who are caught up in sex trafficking because they're so vulnerable, and it's really an honor and a pleasure to work with them. Every time I speak to a new survivor, I feel just so blessed that God saved me so I can make a difference for them and, and their lives and help them come out of it. Sometimes people mistake trafficking in America with what they see on TV or in the movie Taken. It's not always kidnapping. So I just want to correct that off the bat because I do uh, have an experience of both where you experience kidnapping right off the bat. That was my first However, there was also a lot of fraud or coercion in manipulation, basically, in the relationship. And that's how a lot of trafficking of American domestic trafficking of children happens. It's through false friendships, false boyfriends, false relationships. Now, also, I want to share that the Trafficking Victims Protection Act, which is our federal law that governs this issue in our United States, says, that anyone under the age of 18 who's engaged in any form of commercial sex that's stripping porn prostitution or massage violence could be a victim of human trafficking. So just the fact that they're a minor qualifies them. 
But if they're over 18 and there's elements of force, fraud, or coercion, then they also could be victims of human trafficking. However, a lot of times there is at least one of those elements in the child's life that causes them to be lured into the sex trade. And it's very difficult to break that bond that the trafficker has made with the child. It's called a trauma bond because they've met some need, like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, food, shelter, clothing, or a sense of belonging. And because of that, or even security, because they're running from an abusive home, the trafficker sets this false relationship up, and the child buys into it because they don't know the difference. Like, I didn't know healthy versus unhealthy. And because of that, they, be, they become bonded to the trafficker because they've met some need. And so breaking that bond is what we do with our mentoring program. There is hope for me here in uh, California as well as in Florida. And we have survivor leaders around the country. So we try to break that bond through a survivor-to-survivor survivor peer mentoring support and then turn the tables on the traffickers by showing the child that they've been a victim of a crime instead of a perpetrator of it. Well, a little bit of suffering, but then I'm really nice to you. That kind of thing. And over time and over years, I don't remember what the term is called, but you can learn to love your situation and your abusers, and mm. you know no different. Yes, that's, that's very good insight, Amy, and I love your book and what you stand for and everything you've gone through and what you were saying. We're just scratching the surface in some states around the U.S., but now that I'm here in California, I realize how much the need is to educate society, uh, those in the public eye on what is trafficking, and those in law enforcement how to create collaborative approaches, and I'm thankful that they're very open to that. You're right. There is a starting point. How does somebody become vulnerable, as we were talking about before the break, and abuse oftentimes starts within the home. It can be as small as emotional abuse, but emotional abuse is still abuse. The minute someone convinces you or talks you out of denying your feelings, you're being abused. The minute someone talks you out of denying your feelings, you're being abused. And so when you feel like you're being rejected, shamed, blamed, or any type of uneasy feeling, you need to identify that and stop it immediately because if you allow it to continue, sometimes you don't even know that it's happening and hopefully this radio program will reach somebody who can identify what I'm talking about. You just know something's not right in this relationship. The first thing to say is that if you think you have been a victim or you've seen trafficking, you can report it anonymously through the National Human Trafficking Hotline. It's 888 3737 and that's the Players Project National Human Trafficking Hotline. So I just want to give that out. If you see uh, a lot of men coming in and out of homes, because yes. a lot of brothels are in them. residential neighborhoods, and if you have yourself have been a victim of this, it started out subtly maybe at home normalizing abuse emotional abuse, physical, verbal, and then sexual abuse, if you don't try to get some help for yourself, which I want everyone to know, nobody deserves to be abused in any way or exploited in any situation. Abuse is wrong and should not be tolerated in the workplace or at home or in your childhood. It should be dealt with, it should be reported, and you deserve to get help. To get out of the bulk, stolen. We have just one minute left. First, I want to say, if you have been a victim of abuse or trafficking, know that it's not your fault. You are not to blame. To have those needs and vulnerabilities is not a crime. For those vulnerabilities and needs to be exploited is a crime, and it's a federal crime. And you can call and get help. I think through my book, Stolen, it can open the eyes of many people. In speaking with children and high schoolers, I found that one in three middle schoolers were being recruited and one in nine high schoolers through social media and wow. false friend, friendships online. So be aware of who your children are talking to, to the parents, and get involved in their lives. Abuse starts in the home. 
be a safe family, be a safe person, and build your child up. And for those who are helping in this movement, build up survivors and survivor leadership. And together, we can and will make a difference for the lives of trafficking survivors around the world. Yeah, Thank try you. not to be guilty of not doing enough. Be active. Do what you can. Katarina, it's it's the end of the show, and we thank you so much. I know it was very hard to schedule you. <laughs> You're you. such a busy person, so God bless you for taking your time to speak with thank us you, today. Thank you, God bless you. And thank you to our audio engineer, Jasper, for helping with the sounds. Wow, what great guests we have. For more information on Dr. Katerina Rosenblatt and her work, please go to thereishopeforme.org. Let's pray. Dear Lord, just as you helped Moses and Aaron as they spoke boldly to Pariah on behalf of the Hebrew slaves in Egypt, help us speak for modern-day slaves around the world. Dear Lord, you are a strong tower and mighty fortress. Help your rescued children feel safe and begin to heal. Protect them from those who seek to harm them. Dear Lord, your word shows that you bring new joy and hope where previously there was only shame and fear. We ask this for our brothers and sisters who desperately need to accept that they can be made new. Dear Lord, you demand justice for those who have been wronged. Give strength to those who investigate and prosecute traffickers. Encourage them when they are weary. Give courage to survivors when they are asked to testify against their former captors. Amen. This is Amy Cabo. You have been listening to The Cure. Thank you for being with us. Until next week, much love.